At the end of the shooting season, across every driven bird shoot in the country, all of those that have contributed to the success of the season gather together for one last shoot day. That sounds like a bloody good team to me, to be fair. This is Beater's Day. These teams of shooters often represent a melting pot of people from different classes and backgrounds. <laughs> all coming together with the common goal of shooting some game and further cementing their friendships by creating new stories together. It's fair to say a day like this is absolutely priceless. It's just a, it's an event. And that counts for a lot. Welcome to the Downlands Estate, where the legendary Ant McLernan is head keeper. <laughs> On the other side. Unlike more formal days, there will be two teams rotating between standing on peg and beating in the line, hey, hey, hey. whilst maybe even carrying a gun. Hey. This really is my favourite driven shoot of the year. Welcome to Beater's Day. Beaters Day, mate. We're back again. You've survived another year. Another year. And this yeah. year, that's been a big deal, mate. That's been a massive deal this year, mate. It's been one of the hardest years. I've got to say this, God's honest truth. I know every keeper says it every year, but it's got to be the hardest year I've ever had. Obviously, I lost Winkles. Winkles went. The summer period on my own, which was busy and hard work. We are probably shot out more than what we were last year, I think. I feel. Yes. Ducks disappeared early. Right. Yes. Yeah, that was partially me wanting to shoot more because of obviously avian influenza. If anything's going to bring it in, it's going to be on the water. That was my natural feeling. I didn't want the pheasants to get it, so we shot them hard. I feel like today we're going to have to go and get on the pheasants, do what we can with the pheasants. If we can get any ducks, then happy day. You know. Either way, uh, mate, it's going to be a great day. It's going to be a great day. We're going to go down the pub later on, have a few beers. I feel like that's going to be more the enjoyable bit. When I put it all to when bed, you put the today, year. today away, yeah. you get another summer off because that's what keepers do in the summer. Oh yeah, don't Nothing. do anything. No, yeah. we don't do anything, mate. No, and I've got the twenty ball with me. That is going to be interesting. Yeah, for the first well, time. what it was, I've been shooting the twelve ball for the last few days, and I did so well. I was so amazing. I thought, how can I make this possibly harder? So I brought a 20 ball. I want to bring a catapult and whack them out of the air like I did. <laughs> Should we go give it a go then, get the guys right. rounded up, we'll do a talk, we'll pick a teams and we'll get them going. Right, sounds good. Let's do it. Let's go. Okay, good morning everyone. Can you be out a minute, please? Thank you very much for everything you've done for us all year. It's not been the easiest of seasons, but we're there, we've done it. Today is about you guys. We're going to try and do as much as possible today. So if everybody could muck in with everything today, I mean picking birds up, I mean tying birds, I mean getting them in the truck. On my left, I want Will's team. On my right, I want Dan's team. <laughs> I will toss a coin in a minute for who gets what drives. I've already picked the order of the drives. I'm not bothered about height of birds. If it pleases you to shoot it, then please do shoot it. As long as it is safe. Safety is the main thing. The drive will be live onto peg, so as soon as you're there, you are live on your peg. If you can load yourselves up, please, into the beater's car and the tractor, that'd be grand. Anybody that is experienced enough to shoot in the line and is happy to shoot in the line, I am happy for them to do it. Where did that appear from, Johnny? Did you find it lying around? What, was he oh. just... This miraculously fell off my gun. You know, you've had problems with that gun in the past, but just want to double check it was working okay. <laughs> Welcome to Peg. First time ever I've put a shot cam on for game shooting, and I'm actually going to share that footage. What I need to do really is probably shed a leg because it's not that cold. But so far, while well, Sasha's getting ready, three shots, three duck. Beautiful woodcock came over, wasn't really shootable for me, but James, beautiful shot out behind him. So far, so good. Oh, pay attention. I'll tell you what, these are uh, pretty good cartridges. I'm on the MPEG, we're just gonna walk up with the beaters as they get in until I hit my peg. It's a perfect kind of shooting, a lot going on really engaging to the senses. Oh, 
But so far, so good. I am ultra impressed with these hydro and I've said it for a few years now, but there is literally nothing they can't do. We couldn't close Other than make you pay attention when birds are coming over because there's a camera and you're supposed to be talking to it. So I actually tested the shot cam the first time the other day on game properly and looked at the footage and I learned that I have a horrible habit of bang dismount to reload. And you do need to hang with the bird a bit, but that drive went fantastically. I just couldn't be happy with it. I really couldn't. I seem to have found a bit of flow between my eyes and the gun. I clearly can't hit lower ducks, but that's fine because I can hit the long ones and that is better, perhaps. After each drive, the entire team gathers and catches up. One of the best thing about days like this is the number of firsts that occur. First pheasants, first ducks, first left and rights, and even first ever birds. Right, well this tradition of shooting your first bird, it requires that you are blooded by the bird that you shoot, okay? So I've got some of the bird's blood, and we go for one there, one there, one there. Well done, Mike. Best of luck in future. Well done, gracious. First drive's gone, completed it. That's always good to get off the chest when you first start. A little bit nervous about everybody being misbehaving, but everybody was well behaved. Apart from Johnny Carter, never well behaved. Shoots everybody else's birds. Just shoots low stuff, shoots dangerously. It's like, don't ever invite him on another shoot. Um, <laughs> But yeah, apart from that, drive went well. Let's get on to the second one. Got a bit of ground to bring in, so I need to get my finger out. Um, so yeah, we're gonna give it a go and we'll catch up after the next one. So Tom's gonna drive. Oh. You gonna scratch, that's where it is. Uh, don't think it's our fucking cow. It was now our turn to drive and flush the birds to the other team. Johnny, can you come with me, please? Spike with me then, please. Yes, boss. Do you want me to grab that so you can cross this fence safely on camera? No. Nope. So it's been an interesting year this year. Obviously avian influenza has been the big talk of the year. You know, people couldn't get all the poults, couldn't get them brought in from France. We had a massive reliance on France in the past. I'm hoping that that's gonna change this year. Most people are getting flocks in, doing a little bit more. So the hope is that avian influenza in my mind will soften itself and not become as aggressive to the host and therefore won't kill it. The birds therefore may be able to get over it and we can live alongside of it. Um, like I said, it's not in a virus's nature to kill the host. So. Fingers crossed, that's where we're going to go. We're treading on eggshells at the minute with the shooting industry as far as COVID's gone and then avian influenza. So, you know, we need a year to pick things up and get us all back on track and get us making some money, you know, keep everybody in jobs, keep things going right. Um, fingers crossed, it works out. I think it'll be good for the UK game industry because it'll mean that more game farms that are based back home, that do their own flocks, that do their own laying stock, their own incubation and hatching. They're gonna be um, certainly under high demand this year um, because if you can't move them from your area, at least you're gonna be able to move them. The French issue this year really did mess up things. Um, so fingers crossed, we get going again next year. Let's see. The hybrid of beating and shooting gets you into parts of the countryside that you would never see by just standing on peg. And honestly, just increases your appreciation of the overall art of the driven pheasant shoot. Ruby! Magpie Ruby! Just on the back of the pen, shot a nice little jackdaw. Under one of the general licenses, of course. The brush put is just in front of us here. It's a much more communal form of hunting, as I said in the last year's video. There's a fox in the flushing point. Obviously at this point, everyone who's holding guns is very experienced and very well trained. It's just about removing a, removing a fox whilst we can. Because as much as they have a place in the ecosystem, too many of them don't. There's a huge bit of public land next to here that is rife with it. We all work together, holding the line and pushing these birds towards our friends. Oh, good man. The call for the end of that drive meant only one thing. Back on peg.
Right, plan is we're just waiting for the beaters to come along and then we're going to walk up into Peg. Ant's very kind to me and usually lets me take these ones because he knows I do like a little bit of walking, a bit of excitement. Very much my jam. So we shot one duck, a uh, wild duck that flew around the back of us. And now, trying to hold off on the pigeons before everyone else gets in line and the beaters actually arrive. It's quite hard because there's a lot. Instant the success. Walked up the hill and a bird came over where I wouldn't have been able to shoot it before from down there. Much better. Sometimes roaming on peg is really terrible, but times like this when you're at the end of your line and you're kind of covering everything off. I think the biggest marker of this season for me is new eyes. Genuinely, it was a life-changing thing, not just for every day, but in terms of shooting game, especially, because clays are still suffer from clay DHD on a daily basis. But when it comes to game, the ability to read, line, see birds, actually gauge distance has been phenomenal. Although I haven't proved it on a few birds. This drive, other parts of this season have been not more successful than others, but I have been a proficient shotgun game shot than other seasons. And I understand that the gun and tuning everything in makes a lot of difference, but being able to see the damn things is a real treat. I've had a lot of people ask, is it worth going to see Ed Lyons? It could be the best money I've ever spent in shooting. I don't say that lightly. The location of that drive is absolutely beautiful. And with the birds flying over it as they did, really makes it one of my favorite drives in the world. Now it was time for us to take our current harvest back have some elevenses and repeat a lot of the same old stupid jokes we've been making all season. Listen up, because I'm only going to say this once. Yeah, okay, mate, we've got a bit of time then. Ant McLernan is a fantastic shot. Stood well across the field watching as a few groups of duck crossed his way. It was a joy to watch him connect with some of these towering mallard and then go on to watch him bring down an astronomically big pigeon. <laughs> These were the genuine highlights of my day. Celebrating in your friends' successes and casually reminding them of their failures is something that is often missing when you shoot with people you know less. That was a very good pigeon and just shot. I'll let him know now, but for the rest of the day I'm going to tell him it wasn't that good. Seems like the sort of thing friends should do, right? Unsurprisingly, we didn't have that problem today. It's our last drive of the day standing. We'll do one more for the other team in a second. I've been put just out of the way. I think I've had, to be fair, more than my film. I'm happy just to be stood on a little corner here. Usually a couple just flick out this side. It's never going to be too busy for what there is. will be a couple of really nice bits of quality. Whilst the line brings this side up, literally anything could happen. You need to be on your toes. You've got a big old bit of cover in front of you. You've got an opening there and an opening behind you. But I've seen birds flick out the back here in the past. You need to be a little bit careful early on. The shot cam is an interesting addition. The shot cam is definitely an interesting addition. I don't think that it really changes the way the gun shoots, particularly anything like that, but you certainly are a bit more conscious, which is a constant evidence, isn't it? It definitely adds uh, a little bit more of a safeguard to your sporting behavior, if you like because you're going to be reminded of what happened tomorrow morning, or even tonight. I've been shooting steel for two years. I thought today I'd try out the hydrowood lead when we're on the more pheasantly drives. And there is a difference, those hydrowood lead do patch a serious punch, but everything I've shot at and hit with the hydrowood steel fours are equally as dead. Casual pointless observation 101. Average pheasants die with steel loads of good quality. Big pheasants die with good lead loads of good quality. I mean, 
we all kind of knew that, but sometimes we need to be reminded. Well, that was the last drive for us over. We are carrying in the next one. The fun little drive. I made the chronic mistake of thinking that one would be my only opportunity. Shot out to the left and an absolute pearl came out to my right, but that's the chances and the gamble you take, right? I've been lucky to fulfill my childhood dreams of going on driven game shoots. And I've enjoyed every one and the memories and the moments that they've brought me. Hard with this fog or fog to get any gauge and lead or anything. Yeah, I mean, there was like six pigeons flew over me on the last drive and I didn't even see them coming to me. And yet, as I become more experienced, I feel like my understanding of the sorts of shooting that give me more satisfaction as a hunter is actually changing the sorts of bird hunting that I want to do in the future. Oh! You have to be careful as a walking gun not to shoot too many birds. Luckily, Ant has Ollie carrying his. I am letting Ant shoot them because We've still got a long, old way to go. This isn't me saying I'm done with driven pheasant shooting, but rather that I now realize that these experiences of walking in a line with friends, carrying guns and chasing birds are something that I would like to prioritize on going. And hopefully I can get some walked up days booked for me and my friends next season. As the final horn blew, it marked the end of the season and a break from all of us gathering throughout the summer months. <laughs> James. Oh, you you a little something? <laughs> there was a speech, lots of thank yous, and a final drink before we all departed from what was yet another fantastic day in the field. Oh, thank you. Thank you for watching and sharing a little bit of this day with us all. It was truly one to remember. Thank you for watching guys. This channel is made possible by our amazing sponsors. You can find out more about them in the description down below. And if you wanna support the channel, you can join as a member. You get loads of extra content, well, some extra content, and occasionally we hook up and go clay shooting together as a membership group. If you don't feel like joining today, we really appreciate you watching and subscribing. Have a wonderful day.